Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. After a quick visit around the Brecon Beacons, we went back and explored an incredible set of historic properties near Crick Howell and at the foot of the Black Mountains. Immerse yourself in Welsh medieval life by visiting one of the best castles and finest late medieval houses in Wales with us. The two historic properties stand within paces of each other in an idyllic rural landscape at Tretower. A ruined castle with a 13th century round keep and a late medieval garden share the grounds with a 15th century medieval mansion called Tretower Court, which features fine timber work and a walled courtyard. Together, the two historic buildings, or more accurately, complexes of linked buildings, show how priorities gradually change from defence to comfort throughout the medieval period. Tretower marks the period when castles were abandoned in favour of more comfortable, less fortified homes. There are two distinct sites at Tretower, each as valuable in their own way as the other. The later medieval house, and 200 yards to the northwest, the remains of a 12th century castle stronghold, with the round tower being added later in the period. As we take a wander through the gardens here at the court, you're able to see the typical layout and status of a garden of this time. Sir Roger Vaughan's garden was a garden that complemented him being a wealthy cosmopolitan man. He also placed a beautiful dripping fountain at the centre to show off his high status. The garden was a place for quiet contemplation, or maybe a place for gossip, away from prying ears and eyes. He had plants that were symbolic and ornamental, such as the Madonna Lily, which was a symbol of the Virgin Mary, and it also had uses as dyes or perfume scents. He also had a tunnel arbour that was wrapped with white roses, vines and honeysuckle, and it dominated the garden especially when the roses were in bloom, and their perfumes infused the summer air. Other flowers that would have featured in a typical medieval garden, like this one, were lilies, irises, and pinks and violets. In the following century, the new domestic building was rebuilt by Sir Roger Vaughan. Vaughan's mansion boasts some wonderful timber work, particularly in the west and north ranges. Robert's son, Sir Thomas Vaughan, created a wall walk and the impressive gatehouse that we see today. Around 1630, new windows in a classical style were inserted in the medieval walls. The Vaughans supported the House of York in the Walls of the Roses. And when Henry Tudor took the throne as Henry VIII, the Vaughans actually attacked their own castle at Tretower in rebellion against the Tudor king. They were reconciled to Henry and returned to settle at Tretower Court. The Vaughan family stopped using Tretower as their main residence in the 17th century, and it became a farm with some parts of the house used as barns. Kitchen, buttery, pantry, servery, and a great hall are all on the ground floor in the West Range. It's here that a complete dining recreation has been laid out. The great hall adjoined a solar room, then a kitchen, and the lower story seemed to have served as storerooms generally. But with extensive research and restoration, Cadu have brought the place to life by being able to mimic how it might have appeared back in the 1460s by the powerful Vaughan family. Some things to look for are the incredible range of furniture, the utensils, 
the pots and pans as well as the high table that is painted in the Yorkist colours inside the Great Hall. Leading in to one of my favourite rooms here was the Great Hall. It's incredible to see the intricate wooden roof up above with its unusual detailing. And the whole setting of the room is very grand and you can certainly see how this room would have been the room to dine in. The tables have been arranged with the finest linen and tableware. But the one thing that is most eye-catching is the incredible painted cloth behind the high table. It depicts scenes for the eventful lives of the Vaughans, kicking off with the Battle of Agincourt in 1415 and ending with the Siege of Harlech Castle in 1468. This is so interesting to look at and the room just breathes extravagance, which shows that what we think about medieval living being bleak and dark actually was quite the opposite with those in powerful positions or those with money. They lived extremely well and enjoyed showboating that too. Vaughan actually added a new West Range, immediately doubling the accommodation that was available, building a brand new hall, a solar and upper rooms. These upper rooms were large and most of these rooms had white plaster on its walls, but it would have once been painted with really bright colours, murals and paintings of important scenes or a homage to the family's name. All of the rooms would have been heavily furnished with tables and chairs, fine woodwork beds and giant stone fireplaces that would light up the room. As you move through the building from room to room, you duck through low doorways and climb up twisting stairways and you can also creep into the dark of the latrine turrets. You will begin to realise how much has passed through these walls and walked these steps. A very brief history of the place reveals a wealth of stories that are just waiting to be told. What makes Tritawa so impressive is the quality of the stonework is obviously more than what was required for defence. The windows and doorways were of a very high standard, a sign that Tritawa was more than just a place of refuge, it was a residence and a status symbol. Situated around a courtyard, the medieval house had many different buildings from the 14th century, with alterations being made later in the 15th century. The oldest of the buildings are those along the north side, later the west range, south range and the east range were added over the next two centuries under different ownership. The main rooms are upstairs and on the upper floor. Interestingly though, should the house have come under attack, the occupants would simply just gather up their possessions, round up the livestock and head for the impregnable walls of the tower. One particularly gorgeous room, and a room that completely blew me away, was the upper hall in the North Range. This is nowadays a place where you can get married or have civil ceremonies, but it was once a chamber and it would have been partitioned off. It's so impressive to see the three fireplaces and doors, windows and the small latrines in each of the rooms. As you can see from the cross beams above, partitions separated an upper hall, private apartments and also a solar. In this room, the upper hall 
solar and apartments were heated by three separate fireplaces set on the exterior of the outer wall. As you exit the now wedding venue, you'll find yourself traversing the wall walk built in the 15th century, which takes you from the North Range to the Gatehouse, all the way round to the West Range. This wall helped garrison's units defend the court from the battlements above, and in the 17th century was fully roofed. The wall walk finally takes you to the West Range, which has been suggested to have acted as a mess hall for the court's officers and men-at-arms, who would have ate and drunk their daily provisions and relaxed here. Leaving the court and house, we move on to the short and nice walk towards the castle here at Tritower. Sometime around 1150, a stone shell keep was erected atop a moat, replacing the timber walls. Inside the shell were stone buildings, including a hall and a solar, or private quarters for Roger Pickard and his family. The quality of surviving stonework places Tritower amongst the finest Romanesque remains of a Norman residence in Wales. In 1233, the castle was attacked by Richard Marshall, who was the Earl of Pembroke, and it suffered heavy damage. It was repaired by Roger, who added a large round tower to replace the earlier buildings above the castle mound. And after the Picard line died out, the castle was passed through several owners before the Berkeley family took control. The Berkeley's main residence was of course at Berkeley Castle in Gloucestershire, but they were responsible for defending Tritower during Owen Glyndor's rebellion. Then in 1415, Tritower served as a local gathering place for soldiers mustering to join Henry V's army for his invasion of France an invasion that led the English victory at Agincourt. Sir Roger Vaughan of Tritower fought at Agincourt and was knighted on the field of battle before dying of his wounds.
keep stands three stories high with a cellar beneath the ground. It was entered at the first floor level and a bridge connected the new tower to the early curtain wall of the shell keep. You can still see the fireplaces and the windows on each floor of the tower. The walls and the earlier domestic buildings were strengthened to create a wall walk, part of which still survives. And you can mount a set of stairs that is set into the thickness of the wall for a really good view over the castle site and its surroundings. What I really like about the tower is the fact that it is circular, but it was set in a square too. It was pretty fashionable at the time to do this as well. They actually built the outer square part of the castle first, then to show off their wealth and popularity, a circular tower was built after inside. Some of the fireplaces and the windows are really impressive when you see it all weathered and broken down. Something to have a look for is the different carvings in the walls of the circular tower that has dates and initials and some drawings too scratch into the thick walls. The enclosing walls of the Shell Keep are in partial ruins and only part of the 16th century gatehouse actually remains. The exterior of the circular keep is extremely impressive, though you can still see large cracks in the walls and it makes you wonder how it is still actually upright. It's quite amazing to walk around and up the stairs of the tower, being able to see all around and work out where everything would have once been. Just outside the tower are the remains of a big circular red oven and the undercroft of a vaulted solar, or possibly private chambers for the Lord and his family. The entire interior of the tower is empty, with only holes in the inner walls showing where the floor joists divided the tower into levels. But there is one very fine fireplace that is set into one wall. The whole site itself is very impressive and there is a ton to see and take in. And as with most Cadu sites, the obligatory toilets, cafe and a gift shop with its kind and friendly staff are waiting to invite you in. The grounds are really charming and they have plenty of picnic benches as well as being dog friendly, which is a nice touch. We honestly had such a great time exploring here at Tower Court and Castle and we hope you did too, and that we gave you a good insight to the place. So if you've enjoyed this, please be sure to hit that like button, click the notification bell, and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. We, as always, want to say a big thank you to our Patreons, and thank you to everyone deciding to join us on our Explore. We'll catch you in the next one. Till next time.